years, between the Civil War and World War II, black Southerners were no longer slaves, but they were not yet free. What happened in that period of time was so much more terrible than anything most Americans recognize or understand today. In one of the most shameful chapters of American history, generations of black Southerners were forced to labor against their will. Free black people could be just picked up and put in jail. The sheriff department could sell people to corporations and coal mines. He locked me up for three days. And after that, he said, if I don't go to work, he'll put me in the river down there. People's lives were truly stolen from them. Their freedom was taken away. All the southern states used the criminal justice system to put African Americans back into a position as close to slavery as they possibly could. These were real people who were deemed to be of no value. Maybe now, through the telling of this history, these individuals can receive some measure of justice. All praises to the Most High in the name of His Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to the Akims out there that's teaching this word and been faithful to the best of their ability. This is no saint left behind. Shalom Akims and Aquas, some of the sisters that may be listening. Yeah, um, just come to you I'm on my little break, give you a little video. And this video is going to be called Know Your Enemies. You know, know your enemy, man. And so I'm going to just go to a couple of scriptures and just show you, you know, according to the word of the Most High, who your enemy is. All right, so let's get a strip right quick. We're going to go to um, Deuteronomy. Let's go to Deuteronomy 20, 28, and I'm going to go to 68. And it says, And Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt as... Salakia. Excuse me, let me say it one more time. And Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So the first time, you know, we was in Egypt in slavery, and you know, the most high used Moses to go against Pharaoh to deliver his people. So the most high said this time he's gonna bring us into Egypt again with ships. Now, we're gonna go and see what this word Egypt means because that's not the real name of the place. The real name of the place was called Mezurim. Mezurim. So let's see what this word Egypt means. Give me a second. All right, let's go to, uh, no. My fat. Let's go out of here. Let's go to the, let's go to the blue letter. All right, we'll go to blue letter. Uh, Salakia. First, I'm going to go to Exodus. Give me a fat. Give me a second. I'm going to go to Exodus 20 and 2. Exodus 20 and 2 Say I am Yahweh thy power Which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt Out of the house of bondage So this right here tells you that Egypt Means bondage Which means slavery The house of slavery Alright and let's go to the blue letter And see what the blue letter say And this is Exodus 20 and 2 right here In the blue letter And I'm going to show you what the name of the place really was I'm going to let the uh, blue letter pronounce it for me Strong's H, 4714. Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim. See, Mizraim was the name of the place. It wasn't called Egypt. Egypt is a Greek word that just means bondage. And so, and let's see what bondage means. Strong's H, 5650. Evid. Evid. All right, and this word bondage means slavery or servant, manservant. So, just to let you know that the Most High was going to deliver us out of the house of slavery, okay? And so, let's go back to Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy 68, um, 28 and 68. Alright, and so let's read this again. And Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So, the Most High said he's going to bring us into bondage again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And that was talking about the land of Israel, the Holy Land, our land. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond woman, and no man shall buy you. That means, you know, uh, 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 um, deliver you or, or, or buy you back. 
you know, but the Messiah, Yahweh Shah. And so he said he's going to send us into slavery again by the way of cargo slave ships. And we're going to be sold unto our enemies. And who was we sold to? So-called white men, Edomites. That's who our enemy is, man. I know a lot of y'all love them and y'all don't want to accept it, but the so-called white man, the Edomites, is your enemy. Hey, this one looks like a chameleon. Hmm, I don't see it. Oh, it's on. John Cummings had the idea to turn this place into a museum of slavery and nothing else. There is no sugar coating here, no watered down narrative, because we have come to a time where we have to be honest about everything, where we have to be direct and have a crude language, if necessary, about this mess. At its peak in the 1830s, the Whitney Plantation had about 120 people enslaved here. They were squeezed into 22 small shacks across the grounds. Under Louisiana law, slaves were considered property and were bought and sold at auctions. The big house was where domestic slaves took care of tasks like cooking and cleaning. Many of these enslaved women were raped and impregnated by their owners since it was not an option to refuse their advances. Records show that the children of enslaved women had high mortality rates. A child died every year for 40 years on the Whitney Plantation. This memorial is dedicated to all the children who died in slavery. We know that they contributed to the making of American culture and identity. And we know also that uh, their descendants today are suffering much from the legacies of slavery. We need to have all the children of America educated about slavery, educated about Jim Crow, educated about racism, so that they can work for a better world. And see, one thing about this word, man, all you gotta do is read it, you know what I'm saying? The spirit, the spirit explains it itself. You ain't gotta go in all this detail, it just explains it itself, man. All right, and let's go to, um, um, let's go back to Deuteronomy, man. I'm just showing you who your enemy is, man. You gotta know your enemy, man. I know y'all love the so-called white man, the Edomites, but that's your enemy, man. That's your enemy. All right, let's go here. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 28 and um, 49. It's in yellow. I'm seeing green. And it says, yeah, yeah, how will she bring a nation against thee from afar, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand verse 50 a nation of fierce continents which shall not regard the person of old nor show favor to the young and what nation came against us who tongue we didn't understand the so called white man he spoke English we didn't speak English you know we spoke Hebrew some spoke Aramaic but that's just the language we spoke because we was in the west coast of Africa when they came to God because we fled from Israel in 70 AD so, and who is the eagle? I mean, even America has well on back of their dollar bill, a pyramid in the eagle. On back of their quarter, they have an eagle. So, people, know your enemy, man. Know your enemy. Know your enemy. The Edomite, so called. <laughs>
the pride of these Edomites. You see your ego <laughs> that brought you into slavery. <laughs> know your enemy, my people. Know your enemy. All right, let's go here. Let's go to Revelations 13 and 10 right quick. About to make some of y'all mad. Revelations 13, 9 and 10. It says, if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience in the faith of the saints. So-called white man, Edomites led us into slavery. They're going back into slavery. They killed us with the sword. We're going to put them to death as well. I know you don't want to hear it, but it's the truth. All right, let's go to Isaiah 14. And just for those who say that they had nothing to do with it, it was their ancestors. Let's see what the Most High say. Isaiah 14 and 21. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. You see that? Verse 22, for I will rise up against them, said Yahweh of hosts, and cut off from Babylon, America, the name and the remnant, and son and nephew, said Yahweh. So, these so-called white men, the Edomites, going to be put to death, man, for what they did. They got to pay for what they did. And they paying for it. And it's coming soon. It's coming real soon. Know your enemy. Give you a little history. Experience Control GX for men. The first shampoo with a brain. So smart, it reduces gray. gray. Got to know your enemy. The thing that distinguishes slavery in Africa from Atlantic slavery is race. Europeans set in motion a system of slavery that was predicated on the idea that certain people were marked as enslavable. We've learned a great deal about the Middle Passage in the last 40 years or so. The volume of the trade involved the removal of about 12 and a half million people from the African continent. The Middle Passage was the middle leg of a voyage that starts in Europe. The first passage is from Europe to Africa. The Middle Passage is the journey from Africa to America. And then the third passage is the journey back from America to Europe. The Middle Passage could take anywhere from two to three months. Men and women were separated. Men typically were held in the lower belly of the ship. The roof, if you would, was quite low, probably about four feet high. So people couldn't stand. African men were shackled together and they were packed so closely together in a spoon-like position and they would stay like that for pretty much the entire journey you're talking about hundreds of people you're at 120 degrees it smells terrible there are actually people dying around you which has to be a traumatic experience for everybody on board maybe 10 percent of voyages we know there was some attempt to rise up to kill the crew to you can love this, these crackers, these so-called white men and women and children all you want. But they're going into slavery. They're going to be put to death by the sword of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh And it's coming soon. So know your enemy. This red man, this Edomite, the children of Esau, the so-called white man, woman and child, is your enemy. Shalom, Israel.